So Novak wins 21. He's won Wimbledon again, was it ever in doubt? Huge moment for him and his fans, especially after the year he's been through. So let's take a look at what happened in this matchup with Nick Kyrgios. It was, to me, the most entertaining match of the tournament by far. I'll do a match analysis, and then I'll break down what this win means for tennis history. And stay tuned to the end of the video to see if I think this Wimbledon deserves an asterisk based on all the stuff that went down before and during the tournament. Here's the slice presented by Points Bet Canada. So that was an amazing matchup. I tweeted out at the beginning of the final, I said, I couldn't, I can't believe I just watched Nick Kyrgios walk onto the court in a Wimbledon final. But that's 2022, and that's the Wimbledon that we had this year. It was an absolutely unprecedented event in so many ways. But one thing happened that we expected, and that is very normal, is Novak Djokovic winning it in pretty not dominant form. He actually lost a lot of sets on the way through it. I think he lost six sets total, but nonetheless, a huge win for him who's a massive favorite before the tournament started, and he made it through against, honestly, a tough, very tough opponent in Nick Kyrgios today, who played very, very well, who probably would have beaten basically anyone else on tour with the level that he played at today. So thanks for being here. Make sure you subscribe. And also, Points Bet Canada, shout out to them for being the presenting sponsor of The Slice throughout the championships, our content on Instagram, our content here on YouTube, on the website. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Points Bet Canada. And if you bet on Novak Djokovic before the tournament uh, on Points Bet, you would have made a little bit of money today. Not too much. Only 1.77 was his odds before the tournament because he was such a big favorite. Also, shout out to our guy Brendan, who is up plus money on Points Bet. Uh, because he's smart. So that brings me into the match analysis. What happened today? I was taking notes the whole match as I knew this was gonna be intense and I was just gonna get carried away emotionally in it, which I did because it was just epic. Um, not really epic, That I say that word way too often, but it was a good match. And both guys played at a quite high level throughout most of the match, which made for amazing tennis to watch, really good ball striking. And yeah, that's the type of stuff you wanna see at Wimbledon. So that was awesome today. Set one, Nick Kyrgios served amazing. Novak also Novak Djokovic also served pretty good, and but jo, but Djokovic just could not touch Kyrgios's serve. It was so good, and Djokovic's return was not firing yet. Uh, it's often the case though when Djokovic loses uh, one of these early sets at Wimbledon or these tournaments, it's because he doesn't serve it particularly well, and he gets broken and then loses the set. But he actually served well in that in that first set, except for basically one game. Nick took advantage of it. I think it was two double faults from Nole and he got the break and took the set. So that was a great start for Nick. And then in the second set, all stayed normal. It was all on serve, 1-1. Djokovic uh, held, and he was he won a couple of long rallies against Nick, and then Nick decided, for whatever reason, to get mad at his box for not being in the match enough. And that carried on into the changeover, into the next game where he was serving. He was still mad at his box the entire changeover, even though he's up a set, and then he got broken in that game because he was upset, didn't serve great, and Novak Djokovic started to key in on that, and that just got him into the match. So mind-blowingly bad choice of mental game from Nick Kyrgios, but you sh that obviously, what did we expect? We knew he was going to break blow up at some point, but when was he going to do it? When he got down? Nope. It was actually when he was ahead, uh, and that helped him get down. So that was a tough one for Nick Kyrgios and the viewing audience in set two. And set three, it was four all, 40 love for Nick Kyrgios on his serve. And then he kind of got distracted or whatever. Nick Kyr Djokovic got back into the game at four all. And then Nick went to blame his box for not being up enough. He said he was saying to them, you got you got lazy when I was up 40 love. And so that's why I didn't win. Well, maybe Nick got lazy <laughs> and that's why he didn't win. But that again gave Djokovic energy, got Nick distracted, and then he got broken right there. Set three, Novak Djokovic. Are you noticing a trend here? So thankfully for tennis fans, I tweeted, is that Novak or jo or Kyrgios was able to regain his mental fortitude to play the match out. And in the fourth set, we had some really high-level tennis. We got all the way to a tiebreaker, and then Djokovic's return just took over and was too good. So very high-level match from Djokovic. He, play he was locked in. I was thinking before the match, Novak is going to do what he had to do against Federer in 2019 when he promised himself before the match that he will not get emotionally rattled. He did get a little bit emotionally upset at you know different line calls going his way, but he was up for the final three sets, so he didn't really get down or need to get down too much. But he played at a very high level the whole time, served well, very 
um, high level first or percentage th throughout the match, 63%. Decent, uh, won 82% of his first serves, though. That is very, very high. And took two of the four break points he got. Um, and that's all he needed to get through Nick Kyrgios. If I was going to give three stars to Novak Djokovic for what helped him win today, the three stars would be Novak's return. Uh, in the second set, especially, it really showed how much better it got from the first set. And the third set and the fourth set, it was all really good. And just put pressure on Nick Kyrgios over and over and over. And that's why we saw him, for the most part, crack. Um, Nick Kyrgios' mental game really allowed Novak Djokovic to get those breaks, though, especially in sets two and three when those breaks happened. You got to wonder, I tweeted out what, I was like, Djokovic has been super solid to get into these games, but you got to wonder what even like a top 100 player's mental game would do for Nick Kyrgios here. Would he have gotten broken? Would he have found a way to break? Djokovic, would this match have a different outcome? You just never know. But yeah, it's kind of silly to just wonder about these things because that's just never how it's going to be for Nick. It's always going to be a circus. And then the third star would be Djokovic's level throughout. Just steady. Like I said, no huge drops. Didn't play perfectly every game, but played well enough in every set to have a steady enough level where he never let Nick get away with anything easy. Um, so yeah, that's the three stars for Novak. And that's the match. It was crazy. One of the funniest things I saw was, or just was to have Nick Kyrgios you know, berating his box as he does, getting mad at them, swearing at them. And then like uh, Kate Middleton and her son sitting right there in the box and her son probably hearing all these words that he'd never even heard before. And she just, that, that contrast of classes in Europe, I really like that. You know, Nick from, like he said, Canberra from the rough courts in front of like the most snotty toddy box in, in the whole world. Uh, I just love that contrast. And that's, that's what we see in Wimbledon when the stars arrive and Nick Kyrgios is one of the stars. That was a great match. Probably the best match of the tournament. Number 21 and counting for Novak Djokovic. What does this do to tennis history? Well, it puts him one ahead of Federer for the first time and one behind Nadal again, even though they're on pace uh, after Wimbledon last year, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, 20, 2022, or 22, 21, 20. I don't know how much that actually changes for the fans, for the GOAT debate. I don't really talk too much about the GOAT debate anymore because to me, the GOAT debate is over. All three of them are the GOATs forever and we're all just going to endlessly argue, it seems. But who's going to win the Grand Slam race? I don't know. I still have a, I would have my money on Novak. He seems to have the most years left in him. And this next generation of players does not to seem to be putting up any resistance to that. Wimbledon this year. Is it an asterisk tournament? There's no such thing as asterisk on a tournament and I will never put one there because the history books don't include asterisks. We're not gonna look back and be like, oh, Novak had 20 slams, but his 21st was an asterisk, or Nadal had 20 slams, but his Australian Open 2022 was an asterisk because Novak wasn't there. We're not gonna notice any of that. We're just gonna look at their final numbers. But for us, the fans, if you were ever gonna put an asterisk on a tournament, a major tournament, it would be this one. For the last 20 years, I haven't watched a tournament, a major, where I've been so excited for it to happen, and then the news come out, come out, come out about, Russians not being able to play, Berrettini and Chilich having to pull out because of COVID. And at the end of it, you're just kind of disappointed. You're looking at this tournament and saying, not all the best players are here. That's what the majors are for. And it's not even one of them is missing. Two of them are missing. It was four of the top 10 players weren't there. And, you know, probably five of the top 10 contenders. So in my opinion, it was just a really lame Wimbledon. And that sucks for us, the fans. It doesn't take anything away from Novak Djokovic's win. Number 21, he got it. We did, he, we expected he would. And if all those guys were there, he would still be the massive favorite to win. Let's be honest here. But in my opinion, that's Wimbledon did it to themselves. They could have avoided this by allowing Russians to play. And they got a lot of karma. I don't think Wimbledon was sold out until very late in the tournament for a few matches. And we had a... Russian-born, Russian-living, Kazakhstanian player win the women's, and we had Novak Djokovic win the men's in one of the least interesting and engaging Wimbledons we've ever watched, let's just be honest. So that might ruffle a few feathers. I may never get accredited to Wimbledon, but I got to speak the truth when I feel it, and I feel like a lot of you share the same based on what I've seen on Twitter and in the comments. So not all depressing though. There's lots to look forward to. It's now onto the American hard court swing, a quick vacation for me to relax. And then we'll have all the players playing at the US Open. I hope that they let Novak Djokovic in there in the US, but we'll figure, we'll learn about that later. But it should be an amazing US Open and hard court swing in, up in the US and Canada. And I cannot wait. So thank you guys for watching the slice during the fortnight at the championships. I'm Stephen Bowden. Shout out to Points Bet Canada for being our presenting sponsor. And I will see... And I will see you guys all on the Twitters 
for the debates and down in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks for liking this video and thanks for joining our channel. And we'll see you next time here on The Slice.